Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that comes the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. This week, after five years and two Kickstarters, Rogue Redemption, it's out, and that's probably the only nice thing we're going to say about it. And have you ever wanted to play Mafia using the Unity engine? Really? Well, all right. Um, I, I guess we got some good news for you, question mark. Well, they see Control... Alt and pick up, but they don't see any any key. So I guess Gabe will order a tab. And Sapphire is interesting, or releasing an interesting project port that you can never buy. Do you hate acid flips? Well, Venture Beat thinks you're wrong. And the other shoe drops, that's two rocks if you're keeping score. That that gave me cancer, Pedro. Um. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that just wasn't good. Wait, wait, wait to fuck that up. I mean <laughs> show's over, folks. Bye. Ladies and fucking gentlemen, I'm Vin Stone here at LGC Actual, switching the bits, doing the nightmare fuel on our new test boxins. More about that later. Stay tuned. That's a tease. Joined every week by uh, the sex biscuit himself, one Jordan Swing in Toronto. I'm, ex- I'm, I'm extra buttery. Oh, baby, you're like a cheesy biscuit. And the man on the island from Britannia, you know him, is Hello. Pedro Montes. And you, joining us in Shadowrealm Dynamic and Discord and IRC, helping us form... Do a game of Ultron. You know, that's right. Pick that up, YouTube. I said it too low. Ha, ah, fuck you. Um, before we get started, we'd like to see what's going on in each other's life organs. Uh, Pedro, you first, because I knew you you took a train to somewhere. Yes, I going took anywhere. a lot of trains to the exact same place over the week. I was in London uh, getting the uh, CompTIA. Were you in uh, France? No, no, no. <laughs> Did you see your underpants? Not that either. Well, I did see them when I got home and needed to shower. Uh, but <laughs> I learned that you don't stop while Maybe. you're uh, in the tube uh, in London, especially if, say, you're new there and you actually need to look at the signs to know where the hell you're going. You just don't stop. I had three people run into me the first day because it's like, okay, fine, I'm moving. Sheesh. <laughs> I'm just seeing like an old Looney Tunes. It's like <laughs> people just running yeah. Yeah. Or like some Tom and Jerry shit. Yeah. Pretty fucking much, man. Um, over here in Vinland, uh, I, I got caught up on Preacher. Holy fuck, did I get caught up on Preacher? I watched the first episode. I was like, yeah, watched Strong Word. It was playing in the background. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, kind of glancing at it every now and then. First 10 minutes. Well, the second half of the first 10 minutes is of episode two of series three. Whoa. All right. They, they just wrote one of those checks and like, yeah, you can do anything you want the rest of the series. You're good. You sold me on it. I, I, I'm good. How about you, J-Baby? Oh, not much. I've just been fighting fighting technical issues all week. My brain is poo. Uh, well, it's, it, it, it's it's actually it's actually kind of resembling the horse this week. Oh. Who, um, <laughs> What's yeah. up to this week? I'm sitting there festering in the hot sun, smelling like shit. It's the steam. Linux update. Kind of got it. Almost got it. I don't know. All right. So so close. <laughs> Hey man, making progress. Check this out. Uh, Steam savers. So you might have, well, I, I was actually wondering, uh, when was it? Tuesday? When, when this came out? Was it Tuesday? Uh, Some, something like that. Uh, it was yeah, it the was. Yeah. Yeah, July 10th. So yeah. July 10th. That rolled out. Tuesday, We're talking yeah. about the Steam client beta update on July 10th. Uh, Tuesday, I was down here working in the studio and sometimes you think to yourself, hey man, um, may, maybe I'm just constantly like every 15 minutes jiggling because I have seven monitors in front of me. They never went to power save mode. It was because I had Steam open. Yeah, that that that's right. They've fixed a problem where screensavers or power off would always be disabled if Steam was running. That's since been sorted. That seems problematic. I mean, as as as, as much as I'm I'm pro Valve reversing their position on CRT burning. <laughs> um, yeah, like disabling shutdown seems like one of those things you you shouldn't do on someone's system without you know asking them first. <laughs> Or um, enabling it, as the case may be, with some certain video games. Victor Vran, I'm looking at you. Uh, yeah, uh, I so like the, the old behavior. I like just not having to worry about my mother is going to sleep. Well, the well, the other thing they did was they added a uh, unrecognized controller drop down to Steam input, so that if you have, I don't know, if you you can actually use your Nintendo Power Pad with games these days. You can. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're they're trying to gather more information so that they can support more controllers. So good on them for that. Um, yeah, but especially for like retro controllers, because I don't know if they if they ever re-release Pong on uh, on Steam, 
Maybe, maybe, maybe you can, maybe you can play it on mm-hmm. using your Atari controller or your Sega Genesis controller. One of the things I wanted to ask, Pedro, do you not have like a timeout on your monitors? No, not on the desktop. Why do you it's hate the a, environment? It's not a laptop. I don't need to worry about battery life. <laughs> you could worry about power bills, man. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 just, I just for three months. So I'm good. I just have them turned off just because like I forget to do that when I get up and go to sleep so that like when I wake up at three o'clock in the morning to go to the bathroom, I'm not blinded by my office. Well, there's that, but I do. Like- I shut down my box when I go to sleep. Maybe the beautiful people at home are like I is like talk about stupid superpowers is like the ability to walk in. It doesn't matter if it's down here or somewhere else. The second I walk into the room, everything times out and powers down. Like, Motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's the thing. Coming right. up next. All right, tabs. I have 50 billion of them open in Firefox, but that's not the tabs we're talking about. We're talking about the upcoming tab on Steam. They're making some changes to it. Um, They're rolling those out. We're now, uh, you'll get upcoming uh, games based on your subscriptions and based on the Blackmagic Valve recommendation uh, engine. So that's definitely a thing. Um, And honestly, I think it's a relatively smart move given the sheer deluge of crap flooding into steam on a daily basis having, having something to be like eh, maybe maybe i don't want to play freddy fish three freddy goes to poker town <laughs> so you and only you bitch <laughs> yeah um yeah no uh, but it, it it makes sense at least if they're if they're gonna open the floodgates at least give people the tools to have a non-awful experience so yeah and it, it's, it's it's at least consistent with what their 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 planning is and, uh, it would be it would be, like it would be most, nice though. I was like most say, people it would be in nice the comments, if you could uh, actually <laughs> specify. You know, I just want to see Linux games. I want to see new Linux games all the time. I don't care about anything else. Mac games, Windows games. Fuck off. You done? No. Nope. Okay. My no. turn. <laughs> so here's what I. <laughs> so, like most people in the comments, I find myself not looking at the upcoming releases list, like Ven does uh it's you just go to the store you go to the linux releases you sort by new releases and you tick the games box that's it that's how you get the info on new games because the upcoming releases has been a joke um we talked about soul saga last week or the week before that game has been on the uh, upcoming releases list three or four times over the past couple of months it's just pointless. Have you noticed this? I've seen a lot of developers, and I've, I haven't called anyone out, but I've seen these are usually smaller titles, titles that have been you know releasing soon. They'll bump their fucking release date yes. to get back up on that list, and I'm like, I've seen you like six times, man, mm-hmm. and this thing is nowhere near getting mm-hmm. right. Yeah, you, they're just trying to game the system for exposure. You know, you can't keep keep them down for that, but it it makes it useless. And Steam recommendations are stupid. They're not very good, but yeah, I just sort by new in the mornings because that that's about the only way to make get an erection. Yeah. Also, also that. <laughs> also that. What do we have coming up next? All right. Up next, we have Venture B telling us that we're wrong. If you hate uh, asset flips, you're wrong. Whoa. And they wrote an article literally titled In Defense of Asset Flips on Steam. And their argument basically boils down to Oh, there are uh, these games that could be uh, called asset flips like PUBG and a few others that are really popular. And if it weren't for asset flips, we wouldn't have those games. That's all very well and good. But while you can certainly name like five or six games that fit that definition and are enjoyable to play, there's over a hundred games coming out every single week on Steam. So those five or six that came out over the past two years versus a hundred a week? Really? I mean, the video game industry crashed in the 1980s because of the amount of shit that was being released at the time. The only reason that that doesn't happen as much right now is because you have entire websites and YouTube channels dedicated to pointing out the amount of shit that's coming out on Steam. That's telling people, okay, don't buy that these games because they're shit and they're they're just acid flips. Uh, Because if we didn't have that, if we didn't have that much information about acid flips and shit games coming out on Steam, people would be very, 
very pissed off and they would have probably just stopped buying indie games by this point so well, no listen, that's not a good argument I absolutely see both sides of this argument and one of them's fucking wrong so yeah <laughs> i agree with you there's something to be said for curation i don't necessarily want curation i just want uh quality like control <laughs> basic like it used to be we've addressed this a couple of weeks back you know Bring back the old Steam, where you actually had to have something slightly better than the run-of-the-mill bullshit in order to get on there. You wonder, like, people say, why isn't your game on GOG? GOG has fucking standards. You can't yeah. just put your game on GOG. And, you know, I've talked to developers who are like, yeah, we're waiting to hear back from GOG, and they had a decent game. It's just anybody, what we were just talking about, sorting by new releases. There's sometimes the entire page is just bullshit shovelware. Oh, yeah. You any thoughts, Jordan? Yeah, I mean, to, to some extent, I agree with the article in the sense that, like, for new game developers and for people who are trying to, like, get something at to market, yeah, using using canned assets is fine. You, we disparage enough games for having programmer, right? There's going to be, um, hell, uh, an, uh, Epic, uh, last year, they released a ton of, um, a ton of uh, canned assets from that one game that just got completely abandoned. And using those to construct your game is fine. What we have here, though, is a large collection of bad actors. And so the, the argument here does have merit, but it's uh, it boils down to, yes, this argument holds water in theory, but in practice, uh, people are going to abuse any system they can in order to make a quick buck. We were talking about in the pre-pre-super shows, and if there is a slight shred of profit to be had, these people go full-on Ferengi. They will try to, um, they will do whatever they can to uh, drive value from it. So, yeah. I, I think I think definitely like moving a, a solution would be actually straight up not making it a hundred dollars to get your game on make it actually financially punishing. Um, yeah. The I, I mean that that's that's really the only way to do it. Otherwise, if it, a hundred bucks, what and what's what's the actual profit margin on these games? You gotta we we have to we sort of have to figure that out, get that data, and then we can set an appropriate price. So it's it's it's, it's a little desperate though. Hey, man, Desperados, uh, we, we talked about it last week. We're going to be talking about it in depth later on, we, but we learned a little piece of information, didn't we? Yeah, it is entirely a native port. They went, dis they went despite native. the fact that the menu says exit to Windows. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which I'm I'm pretty sure that it's there because that thing, uh, that thing is actually just an image and not actually rendered text. Yep. Um, yeah, so it's it is fully native. Um, there's no wrapping. There's no anything involved. It's OpenGL. Um, I guess I guess it's written in C plus plus. I assume. I would I would be surprised if it was Java. That would that would probably be uh, <laughs> that that's that's the big old plot twist here. Desperado is brought to you by <laughs> Sun. Um, yeah, but uh, if if that if that's the case, I'm curious then um, if we're gonna start getting native ports of a lot of Sierra's old back catalog because there's a lot of there's a lot of gems in uh, that Sierra pumped out in the in the past in the ages long long before in the <laughs> 1990s early 2000s. Well, we may not be, well, I don't know about this Sierra. We may get some of those too, but uh, the thing that came out, also a little bit of uh, side news, was that Tropico, uh, the Tropico publisher, Calypso, has acquired the rights to basically the precursor of Desperados, Commandos, uh, and uh, it, it, they weren't done by the same company, but they're exactly the same game. Uh, and, well, they, as the publishers of... Uh, Tropico, the Tropico series, is on Linux. Dungeons is on Linux. Uh, Crown Takers and the upcoming 40K Mechanicus, which will supposedly also be on Linux. Uh, it's like, yes, please, get old games, make them work on newer operating systems, especially when it comes to Linux. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Yeah, I, I like this trend. 100% done with that. I mean, knowing that we, we, we're always going to bring up Vangers. 100%. We got yeah. to every episode. Yeah. We talked about 1998. Still, 17 year old game. They did it. I got theories on why it got done. But again, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, hey, man, uh, everyone's favorite uh, dinosaur. Speaking, uh, speak, speaking of old ass games. Right. <laughs> Get oh, yes. the Linux. So, uh, well, if you follow Iculus on Twitter or uh, on any manner of social networks, you probably know that. The Mac and GNU slash Linux versions are now available in the beta branch for Two Rock Two. Yes, uh, pa pa Pedro, uh, it's pronounced Lignux. Thank you very <laughs> Lignux, much. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, but yeah, it's it's available. So if you already have the game, you can just opt into the beta branch. It's the usual spiel. Uh, there's also a bit of a post that Ryan made on his Patreon about it. It's nothing much. It's just, yeah, it's available. Go play it. Let us know if there's any issues. And if it uh, works as well as the first one did, probably not too many. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, well, sorry, Ben, you, 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 you had a comment about the multiplayer and I had a follow up to that. So. Well, this is a couple of things, man. I mean, yes, it absolutely makes with working on uh, 1804 LTS with Ubuntu's uh, and the NVIDIA's. Uh, we were curious. I was anyway, because this one has multiplayer. This is still based on the N64. If you can't tell by the visuals of it, you're like, it, it has that look, that aesthetic. Um, but the multiplayer has an option for direct IP connections. It's like, yes, good. We'll at least have that. Uh, we'll be doing some of that later on. Maybe next week, week after that. Uh, but I didn't see an option, Jordan, for null modem connections. I was like, hmm. Yeah, no, you can't. You can't play it off your uh, fifty-six baud modem. Um, yeah, the, the, the here's the thing. I'm curious how much it would, uh, how much effort it would actually take to hook this into like the Steam multiplayer, so you can just right-click join shit. Because I, I think with this one, you also need a dedicated server to run the server. No. Mm. Uh, well, I mean, did the N64 version have multiplayer? I, no way, right? <laughs> it had uh, it had couch multiplayer. Uh. I, I'm not sure where the net code comes from, which is actually which is actually curious. Like may, maybe maybe the N64 version, as like as a consequence of being ported from the PC version, straight up did have some network network code that was just sat unimplemented because the N64 didn't have an Ethernet port. Hmm. Yeah. Could be, but uh, yeah, it costs currently at fourteen ninety nine. So uh, I think much like the first one, I'm gonna wait till it goes on sale. You know, if you would have picked it up like three weeks ago when you could get them both for 11 bucks or like eight pounds. Um, I didn't have Linux. <laughs> I told you for a fact I it was know. coming to Linux. <laughs> But well, so, I'm in the hey, business I, of I'm rewarding. Right that's, yeah. not, that's not a good purchase. If Hickula says he's working on it, mm. then yeah. we can expect it to be horribly broken. All right. Uh, let's get into some new games, starting with uh, Nightmares. Yes, Richie's Nightmares. I was going to make some obscure joke about that one character from uh, Highlander, the series, you know, Richie, mm -hmm. or before he got his head chopped off. I don't know. This is, then you put it in the show notes and I got to agree. It's like, this is totally not Limbo, you guys. Look at all the colors that are here. Limbo. <laughs> right. This is, this is, this is, there's green, there's red, there's purple, you got the dank perp. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, it's it's uh, five ninety nine. You can pick it up. Um, it's 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 one of these sort of aesthetic platformers where you can barely make out the character from the foreground and the background because everything is so GD dark. Um, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's a thing. <laughs> hand, hand I looked drawn. at it and my immediate thought was, "Is this an Android game?" And I went to the Play Store. It's like, no, but it could be, judging by how many Limbo clones there are. Well, yeah, in all fairness, <laughs> I mean. Uh, this is dangerously limbo, but uh, one thing I, I'm kind of curious about, it seems reasonably priced. This is also age gated. So I was like, hmm. Yes. Yes, it is. Maybe. But again, so is limbo. Yeah, this is true. <laughs> I don't know. Mon mon but, monochrome is dangerous to young minds, man. Listen, listen they're, they're, they're trying to enforce the whole color segregation thing. And I'm going to stop <laughs> there before I say something super incriminating. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's not a porn site, though. It's not a porn site. Uh, check this out. Free ones. We've talked about it, and it's now out. And like, seriously, the free ones. It's not free, however. Currently 10% off. Uh, 1349 wet, stinky American caches. Regularly fourteen ninety nine. Follow those dizzying adventures. First-person platformer, you swing on shit. But you know what? It, it looks pretty, doesn't it? Kind of yes. like it. Yes, it does. Kind of like Valley. Well, <laughs> it, it, okay, speaking of dangerously close... Uh, dangerously close to valley like in a lot of ways with the islands with the swingings and the motions but you know it looks unity i'm almost going to say 100 percent on that but it looks like it's very well done but pedro you said something about the length yeah i i read the reviews because earlier on today uh the um uh, review aggregate score uh near the top of the uh the steam page said that it was mixed reviews so I'm like, okay, so why are people complaining? And yeah, the, most of the negative reviews seem to focus on the fact that the game is three hours long. 
that was it. about the length of Valley, wasn't it? Somewhere in there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, Valley. To, it was about four hours for Valley. Yeah. But yeah, the, the, it seems to be also a pattern uh, that seems to be repeating itself with this one. It's a very short game. Mm. And I, I mean, I mean, to your point about how like it's the floating island thing. I mean, that's kind of the game, though. If you're if you're going to have a game where you're grappling and swinging around, you have to have an excuse to do that. And so doing yeah. the island things like hell, uh, the 2000, what, seven, eight Bionic Commando did the exact same shit, except it was a dystopian city. Uh, so, I mean, that that's that's just kind of what you need to facilitate a game where you swing around and, I don't know, pee on people. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Coming up next in our new game segment, Hero U, Rogue to Redemption. That is right. I talked about that in the opening. Two Kickstarters and five years late. This is better than never. Sometimes. Um, they did launch. It is available. The Mac and Linux initial launch was our, the old classic zero byte download has since been fixed. This clocks in at the holy fuck me, 3149. Mm-hmm. Um, ouch. Uh, well, li- listen, th- this, this game has an impressive pedigree what, with uh, <laughs> your two Quest for Glory folks on here. Um, L- Laurie Ann Cole and Corey Cole. Um, I, I, I don't know. Like, is it just me or do the portraits here seem a little off? Oh, yeah. A mean- little bit. It was very, very hand drawn. No, not not very hand drawn. This is like I'm used to drawing on paper, and this is like my second or third attempt on a tablet. Dude, every one of these pictures of the, I guess your main protagonist, like, is straight up. What is wrong with your face? Uh, like every, <laughs> even even the other ones are like, yeah, passable, poorly done, but passable. But he's all fucked and jacked, and every look, every single. It's the forehead. I mean, look at how big his forehead has to be See, to right accommodate there, just how high right, right his up hair there. Is. He's just looking straight up rapey, man. Um, <laughs> Just don't, just don't, don't lock any doors when you're in the same room with this guy. So ah, I'm sorry. I don't know. Uh, one thing I did notice about this game in the reviews, there's a lot of people white knighting this game. Mm. I mean, straight up going, well, okay, yeah, it's got a ton and ton of flaws, and it's got some and all this, but but it's it's a great game because reasons. Yeah, no, this is another one I'm going to wait and see if the developers reply to my email. No, no, don't, mm-mm, don't, mm-mm, <laughs> no. Ooh, <sorry. laughs> I mean, here's the thing. People can like what they like, right? But I, I, I don't know. This is like a Diablo-y quest for glory type thing. I, 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 I don't, I don't know. The, the aesthetic is enough to turn me off this game. It's I, if, I, if I, if I have to look at that for thirty odd hours of RPG gameplay, no, no, thank you. Mm. Okay, dragonfly right. in the sky. Yeah, dragonfly fly so high uh no i don't know where i was going with that either uh dragonfly chronicles it's a 2d platformer and that trailer is making me kind of angry it's just it's like oh yeah we're putting our game up for sale and our uh trailer is going to be showing at like 12 frames a second that's not a good thing that's really not a good thing but there seems to be some, uh, oh, look, there's a, a couple of shmup sections, uh, which is nice, I guess. But yeah, the, the bulk of it is, is or seems to be a lot of platforming. So uh. I don't know, man. And the shmup stuff uh, looks passable and all that. But I can't tell, like all the side scrolling stuff looks wicked hella janky. But I can't mm-hmm. tell if that's just, you know, dude, do that. Whoever didn't know how to capture stuff properly. Uh or if the I, game I is know. actually like that drawings and the promotional art i'm inclined to think that this is uh it's a, it's 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 a little bit of fucky uh, like art wise yeah the the uh the added size really bits this kind of har- harkens back to that nest those nest days we're like oh we have to pad our shoot our platformer game let's throw some shoot em up segments because they don't take that much uh, arcade space. section <laughs> hey but uh unlike the windows and mac version which require five gigabytes of storage i'm proud to report the linux version written in assembly only five megabytes I'm proud to compress the hell as well <laughs> it is beautiful one more thing before we get out of here um jacking jacking it off man jackbox games just to report uh Party Pack 5 is underway. They're doing announcements. Uh, might want to follow them on Twitter. We do the FUBAR, which is Trivia Night, with Jackbox 1 through 4. Go back and watch it or come party with us if you want to. But they are slowly releasing uh, several little bits. They are showing off Party Pack 5 next weekend. Well, this was 
this weekend coming up. You can go check it out. Uh, they are doing live streams. But the whole point of that is just to let you know, it's on the way. And since they went through the trouble of backporting one through four, probably safe to assume five is going to come in. And... Backporting for, for an FLV. Yeah. yeah, it's an SWF file. You run it. That's, that's what I'm saying. I mean, the engine is like one single piece. And I'm assuming it's going to work with everything else, even though it still to this day doesn't officially say on the Steam store that it yeah. supports Linux. Apparently, too, the if the rumor mill is to believe there's actually going to be you don't know jackpot. So straight well, it's up, not, it's, it's not the rumor mill, man. They came out and said it. <laughs> rumor mill. <laughs> they're lying. They're the filthy liars, and I can't believe any of them. I can't believe any of you either. Uh, that does it for Steam news. Coming up next, uh, I, I I I don't know. We talk about porting games using old crappy X code. And just in case you haven't had enough of us by this point, well, we're going to make sure to alienate everyone as we start chilling ourselves out for your monies. Yes, we love you. Please don't go away. <laughs> we we, we, we got to chill for the bills, man. Hosting this shit's expensive, and you can help give us money by going to linuxgamecast.com. Click the support the show button. All sorts of neat stuff for you to click on in order to give us your money. And you can also head on over to uh, patreon.com. Slash the next team guys. Look at that. Look at look at all those links. It's beautiful. Don't you, just, hey, don't you just want to click on them? Don't you also need to drive a car and earn? Because you got options, man. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, but, uh, whoa, whoa, wait, 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 wait. What was it last week? Damn it. Uh, oh, it was beds and purple shit or something. Oh, whiskey, but, whiskey and beds. Yeah. Whiskey and <laughs> whiskey Purple delivered bed. straight to your bed. <laughs> Linux Gamecast will not deliver a whiskey straight to your bed, but you can check out patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. Anyways, you want to get some cool stuff like access to the show notes, access to the Discord channel, your name in the credits. Um, hell, if you're if you're like Foxy, who's been a Patreon for a long time, you can straight up go be like, hey, you know those uh, Thursday, Tuesday, Friday streams you're doing? Yeah, I want to be on one and we're doing this. And I was like, sure, yeah, we'll do it. Because we love our Patreons. <laughs> Listen, man, we're only like seven thousand dollars a week away from uh, buying a empty nuclear missile silo and building a log cabin <laughs> in it. We have yeah. perfectly adult logical goals. Three hundred and five posts uh-huh. you will get access to. Your support allows us to be ad free. You know we're honest. You might not like what we say, but you know we believe what we say, and we get to do Tuesdays and Thursdays streams with you guys. Um, Pedro did some open moral win. That was great. Yes. Everybody had fun and. Jay, baby, you dropped uh, with everyone in Armadillo or Armanani Dildo. Uh, yeah, Ar- 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 Armani Ar- suit Ar- exchange. <laughs> Ar- Arm and Arm and Ar. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. we, we got we got some we got some uh, people we got to thank. Um, uh, J- James C. He's got access mm-hmm. to the show notes now, so James if you want to be cool like him, you can you can now actually see the show before it gets made and even make a couple suggestions hey, in the show notes and he's new death note so not only does it get us rank in the discord come check that out uh where you get all the craziness the other what six days and man it's just fucking always crazy in there uh don't mm-hmm. worry irc is always free no paywalls um and you get access to the pre pre super shows now with the video that's our production mm-hmm. meeting because you motherfuckers are our bosses and we like to tell you what's going on yeah, well, what, what, watch, watch Jordan set up an open VPN server, and I think I, th- I think we got a we got a new uh, addition to Frank's fuckwall. Oh shit! Uh, yeah, well, Admiral uh, JT got us a box of things. Yeah, we get we got a big sexy Amazon box. Well, it's Ooh. not big, but it is sexy. Look at that! Look at that cardboard. It's, it's not it's not the size yeah. of your box. It's what's inside. You're wondering what that is, man. We, we get a little bit of a wish zone. Uh, we're putting together a crazy, crazy, crazy device uh, and monsters. This is the shit we need. Add basic stuff. So if you do that, you end up on Frank's buckos, which is fine. Upstanding cannibals, and you you can tell this is something that was on our wish zone because it's Amazon basics because we're cheap. But when you do that, you get to send in one of these, which is a gift thing. What does it say? We we are obligated to read these, so be creative, please. Admiral JT writes, you need to put more cheap stuff on your list. (laughs) Cool, so Admiral JT's bomb is going up on the Amazon wish list. I was thinking. (laughs) Oh, can can we put Pedro on there? No, uh, I'm cheap, not the cheapest. Not cheap, not free. <laughs> oh, free. For free is in beer. Right. Um, and also everyone shopping using our uh, 
Amazon affiliate links. Thank you. I know that takes a second. It doesn't cost you anything. We get a little taste of that. And the Humble Bundle mm. stuff. That adds up. And plus, Charity gets a cut of that too, which is also nice to see. It's a weird thing to sit back and you're like, wait a minute. We've raised money for Charity? How? Um, one last update is Jordan is coming through because Mike G like threw some Dells our way. Dude, he yeah. gave us the Dells. Well, we are officially <laughs> testing. This is the first test run of the Iscariot 9000, which is the one Jordan's currently on. It is tied up with his own video encoder audio coming into our main box, Tipsy Danger. And it looks like it's going to work. And no major big fires yet. Blam! <laughs> you know what? Right. Well, let's just get into the news before that uh -huh. happens. How about that? Yeah. Can we yeah. do that? Uh, DXVK. This new version out. Uh, not 6.2. It's a thing. Um, just a couple updates. Hey, man, what is that? Never heard about it. Uh, it's the secret magic sauce that makes all your wine games run a lot better. Because uh, it kind of <laughs> is. What's in this business? They fixed some incorrect full screen resolutions in various games. Hitman Absolution. They fixed rendering issues with that. Pedro, so I, I how do I install this? Do, do I just uh, pseudo app? Git or Pac-Man uh, something? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yum, exactly. yum install Lutris is what you do. <laughs> uh, besides doing that, you also have to uh, preload if you just download the thing. Uh, you have to build it from Sauce. And then you need to, with each and every single wine game, you can uh, set it to preload the necessary library and then run the game with it. Uh, if you don't, it'll just use regular wine. But if you do, then it, start, it starts using the DXVK layer and uses Vulcan instead. Or, yes, you can just use Lutris, and it, it, Strider's been doing a good job of uh, making sure games now support it. Didn't, didn't Strider make it, like, wicked hella simple to just, like, the games that support it? There's even a page at Lutris.com that tells yeah. you uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, the, it's their search page, as Strider was very adamant to correct us about. You can just search <laughs> DXVK and see what games support it yep. at the moment. Yeah, no, it's, it's good. You um, take, the, take the heavy lifting off of wine so that you can play your games that you own, that you paid for. And doodly doodly. Yeah. All right, Daggerfall Unity. It's the it's still one of the largest game worlds in the world. And now you can play it on modern computers. Well, sort of, kinda. Uh, there's a new. Uh, they have the new builds out for July 2018. Um, they they're they're making a bit of progress. They have uh, now some magic item creation stations. So if you're playing a character that makes magic items, you're going to be able to do that. Um. They've added. They've also added a couple of console commands to basically enable cheat mode, giving you like infinite health, mana, setting your level, etc. Which is good if you need to like actually inter. If you're actually testing this project and you need to like go to an area, you don't have to play through the entire game to actually go to the area. You can just be like, no, I'm level 100 now. Let's go see if this boss actually works. So that's going to be good for uh, debugging some of the stuff in the later portions of the game. Um, apparently, NPCs no longer stop when weapons are drawn. Um, <laughs> There's some, do, there's do you some, think that uh, has anything to do with the improved near-death experience? Yeah, exa exactly. <laughs> <laughs> subtle, subtle pulsing warning when you're at extremely low health. Uh, yeah, so there, there's lots, lots of good stuff in here. It's an interesting project, taking an old DOS game, making it work under the Unity, giving making it look weird and 3D-like when it never did in the first place. Um, I will say, interesting choice of engine, Unity. We've talked about this before. They do kind of make a big... Uh, one of the big things apparently a lot of people are using is the Enhanced Sky mod. Totes fucking broken on this build, along with several other mods. So you might want to keep that in mind if you like your Daggerfall with a side of Unity. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. And up next, well, speaking of uh, engine re-implementations, we have something that was mostly like a complete game re-implementation. It's X Stone Age. It's the remake of the old DOS game Stone Age, and uh, I see the you, connection. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't get it. What does, this, what does this have to do with DOS? I don't know. Penis. Yeah, the the original game came out on DOS. Uh, well, uh, what's, this, what's, what's uh, the game, Pedro? This insane person uh, decided. You know what? Back in the day, he didn't really have a DOS machine. He was running Linux, so he wanted to play Stone Age, but he couldn't. So he went out of his way and remade the game, quite literally. Uh, so uh, this is the code. Uh, he says that he's not proud of it. Let's face it, no one's ever proud of the code that they made a month ago, let alone 
20 years ago. So, yeah. Uh, it is rough, but it works. Supposedly, I didn't actually try it. I didn't even know what a Stone Age was, the game. Uh, so yeah. I had to look it up. It's like, oh, yeah, no, no idea. And, 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 and I mean, he, clean, he cleaned up a bit of the code, too, but a lot of it is just C, C and X. Um, and this is this is a lesson to you game developers. Use SDL too, because then you don't have to write X code. You can just kind of make windows and fill them with no, all Jordan, sorts of No, Jordan, it's better stuff. to use a proprietary input system that only kind of works with some things. I have no. Wait, <laughs> Unity? Uh, oh, yeah. I, I mean, the, the, the project comes with a level editor or two if like, you've played through all of Stone Age and you want to challenge yourself. Maybe, I don't know, maybe there's like a community-made Stone Age speedrun thing for community maps i don't know hey man I, I i just don't want my kneecaps broken all right uh check it out open motherfucker i mean uh, <laughs> open mafia unity because we we love unity actually unity is a great tool just people use it mm -hmm. the wrong way this is a re-implementation of mafia not just mafia regular i think this is mafia 2 right uh no just mafia no, it's the original fine one, yeah. it'll just be regular mafia built in unity and you can run it you will need the original assets and it's a thing man now i i saw they're racing the old cars i've never played the mafia series there there was a hot rumor that we might get some of that on linux way back in the day but that never came to fruition but it's an mm -hmm. active project they are still working on it they have the um discord setup if you want to get in there help out do some testing i just thought it was worth a mention i because it kind of looks like a neat game yeah and they've, they've made quite a bit of uh, good progress but they still have a couple of big goals to accomplish like they need to they need to set up a parser for the internal scripting language mafia script uh they're still having problems with menu generation and reading in light map data i don't know maybe they need to de-swizzle themselves <laughs> Thoughts? Uh, it's 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 mafia. I when we first talked about this uh, particular reimplementation, I mentioned that I didn't like it back in the day. Maybe now my um, sensibilities have changed. Although stick around for the review, and you might learn otherwise. Uh, but yeah, no, it's it's mafia. I, I, once it comes out, I will be more than happy to uh, take it for a spin. I think I have it on Steam. I know. Man, that, that was like a source of curiosity of like, how the fuck do I have Mafia 2 in my library? Then, like, after much research, it's like, I, I, I didn't drunk buy a fucking Windows game. It was on a humble bundle at one point. It's like, oh. yeah, that, that, that's usually the go to guess is like, why do I own this game? Oh, probably, probably humble. Probably. I don't know, man. Arthur points out, yeah, it's like the OG check version of Mafia, but it's in Unity. It's brilliant. Maybe go check it out. So, mm -hmm. uh, do you, do you want to build an everything box? Maybe something that's not a nook, but it's kind of a nook. Maybe. maybe. So um, mm -hmm. there's a so Sapphire. Uh, they make uh, usually they make AMD video cards, but apparently they have a embedded systems unit, and they're producing a. Uh, they call it the FSFP5V, which is an STX motherboard. It has an embedded Ryzen V1000 APU, um, and it's. Uh, it's, it's it's a quad core eight threads. It, um, they can they can actually have up to uh, Vega eleven GPUs in there, so it might be good if you need to like set up a set top box uh, or a beefier streamy arcade box or emulation box or maybe even an arcade thing. Um, it'll, it'll it'll fit in a random in a standard SDX case. Uh, it has a couple display port outs, um, USB 2.0, no 3.0, and two NICs, which, I don't know, to me, it's like, I kind of want to turn this into a router now. Hey, router I kind of feel like you're, you're fucking burying the lead, man. Two NICs, fucking four display ports. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then yeah, again, you, you, it can, is, you can definitely uh, drive some pushing, stuff with that. It is pushing a, uh, a Vega GPU, so it could probably push it. Uh, those, uh, the DR4 SODMs are going to be pricey, but... The thing that immediately popped into my head as I saw the board is like, oh, 3D print a VESA compatible enclosure mounted at the back of a monitor, and look, you have yourself an all-in-one. Yeah, yeah really but cool. I mean, if you go by the speculative pricing, this thing's going to, it's no priced high end. It's going to be like 400 yeah. bucks, but I mean, it's coming in variants from the Vega 3 to 8 to 11, all the way down to 12 to 25 watt TDPs up to 54. Yep. So, yep. I mean, salt to taste. Um, hey, man, Vega support, pretty decent. 417 and up, 
Mm-hmm. So yeah. maybe. Well, 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 good, good, good for a little stream box if you send them an email, Pedro, and be like, "Send me a box. I want to make a steam machine." <laughs> and send it <laughs> to me. They'll just laugh in my face and, and tell <laughs> them they got lost in the mail because Sla- yeah. slap me, slap me, and call me Shirley. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Come, coming up next, we're we're desperate for your pr- approval and. I, I, I don't know. I, I probably should have gone with the John Bon Jovi thing. Cowboy, steel horse, dead or alive. Wanted. Yeah. Review. Chair acquisition. Wanted. I'm not going to follow the cliche like so many Trigun themed AMVs. I'm just I'm just going to get get into it. We're, we're throwing chairs at Desperados. Wanted. Dead or alive. It's developed by Spellbound. It's on a custom engine. Fully natively ported onto the Linuxes, by the way. We talked about that earlier in the show. Uh, you can pick it up for about five bucks, which is reasonable for a 17 year old game. What is it? In this Western style title, discover a game of strategy and tactics played out in exceptional real time. You're in charge of a team of six mercenaries and must find a way to complete your missions be it infiltrating an enemy fortress, saving a team member, or escaping an ambush. Combine the different skills of your six heroes and lead them to victory. This is Chair QA's mission. This is, according to the show notes, where we are here to break your game. We're Ivan Dragoing you. Oh, God, the return video is straight up giving me a seizure. <laughs> My God. I. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm trying, but it's all like colorful and shit right out of my peripheral vision. Um, yeah, so check acquisition, new and improved. We break it down. Uh, we get a, for the functional scores. You get a score from one to four based on does it launch the performance, the graphics, and the controls. We tell you how it works fact wise, and then afterwards we give you a little bit of the fun, the, the touchy feely, how we thought or what we thought about the game. We give it a score from one to four chairs. One chair means that it's crap. Two chairs means that it's meh. Three chairs means that's pretty good. Four chairs means that it's awesome. So, um, yeah, let's kick this off. Then did Desperados make with the working? Indeed it did. I, I, I'm seeing your flicker return. That's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> over here on Kumbuntu, 1804 LTS. It's kind of brilliant. It works. Uh, no issues launching it. Performance, solid 25 FERPs of glory. Um, that's really what it's kind of locked at. That's what the video is at. That's what the game plays with. Um, no issues with the controls. The only uh, graphical issue I do have, and it's going to get dinged a little bit of a chair for, is there is no option for windowed mode, which makes life a little bit rubbish in 2018. And if you're going to go through the trouble of porting a game, that old, I knew you did some work, maybe throw in a windows option for that. But I'll give it a solid three. <laughs> they, they- they did have a Windows option. You just exit to it. Yeah, right. How about Fedora? <laughs> yeah, uh, so Fedora, uh, it launches fine. It has a little bit of a freezy issue when you alt-tab, but it's not breaking anything. It just takes a while to get back into the game. Performance-wise, yeah, it's bringing that 1080 Ti to its knees. Oh, man, can't get it above 25 frames a second. Uh, like Ben said, there's no uh, windowed mode or resolution controls, so that dings in a chair on the graphics. And yeah, controls, you, you click, you click some more. And sometimes the game gets stuck on one of the things you got to save and reload, but that's not a big deal. Plus you can rebind hotkeys. Um, mm-hmm. there, 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 there are other issues with the controls, but I'll get to them in the fun section. So on Fedora 2864 bit with the i7 6700K and the GTX 1080 Ti, it'll get uh, three out of four chairs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about and Solus? over here on Solus. Uh, yeah, the performance is uh, it's just stuck at 25, no matter what you do. Uh, it launches just fine. It stays launched uh, for all the good it does. Uh, the graphics, yes, it does get thing to chair here because, yeah, no windowed option, no resolution options. You do get some graphics options, but, yeah, you, all, all you get to change is the screen ratio, and the game doesn't upscale uh up resolute up res itself to up the resolute. uh okay yeah <laughs> doesn't up res itself to whichever monitor you're running it just upscales the image which i'm guessing is 1024 by 768 to fill up your screen and it's kind of, it doesn't look particularly good and although the uh the in-game graphics uh i guess they don't suffer as much as the menus did if you don't mind the brown, that is. <laughs> There's a whole lot of brown and gray in this uh, in this game. The voice acting is pure uh, unbridled camp. It's it's amazing. Uh, the controls. That's where I have to dig in a chair uh, because the second introductory mission after you destroy the wagon, 
the game takes away control from you as it's supposed to do because you just dropped a barrel of dynamite and you don't want to shoot it because you need it. Mm-hmm. And the game just wouldn't give me back control. It wasn't frozen. I could still hit escape, but I just couldn't click past it. I could do anything. So that's where I got stuck. I haven't restarted the mission a couple of times. The exact same behavior. So that's that's a bit of a nope. Two chairs on Solus. All right. Well, you can see the rundown there in the show notes. Uh, and let's let's do some fun. Ven, did you have fun playing uh, Desperados? First you, off, uh, d- man. Did you? I was, I was going to make a life-size blow-up Antonio Banderas joke, but go on. All right, fine. Guys, first off, big honk and thanks to THQ for giving a 17-year-old game a native port. I'm kind of getting a kick out of um, it not running correctly, kind of, if at all, on Windows 10. I loved reading that in the forums. That was Jordan yawning again at 610. Note to take that out. Full disclosure, I quit playing these types of games in the DOS ages with King's Quest. I mean, I don't mind the real-time tactics genre, but, you know, at the end of the day, just not my bag. But what do we have here? It's a well done, even by today's standards, STR, RPG, stealth game thingy, basically. 25 missions, semi-passable voice acting. Good for its day, point-and-click adventure mixed with the option to shoot or sneak your way out of situations. What is there not to love? For me... Well, there's a gang of shit on the screen that needs to be clicked in order to get through the game. You know, you get crouching, spying, stabbing, throwing, shooting, reloading. It sounds like a fun weekend to me. I'm guessing this interface made a little more sense back in the days of 4x3. However, like when it's almost stretched out fully to a 28-inch screen displayed at UHD, that's a lot of travel for your dribble. Fortunately, the game has reasonable hotkeys, but I warn you of this. Save, save, save. (laughs) Because if you cock up once, it is wham, right back to the beginning of that chapter. I learned that the hard way, twice. Outside of that, you know, I had a good time for what this is, because it's King's Quest style joint, wearing chaps, assless ones. And if we're going to be honest, you know, it's like 90% better than most of the hipster pixel bullshit. This is OG hipster, pic- you know, just pixel bullshit. But mm-hmm. compared to what's on the market today, man, I was like, these games used to be good. This one still holds up. So, in closing, um, I'd like to thank the summer interns at THQ for making this port a reality, because I'm kind of guessing that's what happened, maybe, question mark. And P.S., I'm sure Jordan will touch on this. How many times did you try to rotate the map? I'll give this a solid three. I liked it. Plus, it's priced to sell. It's on wicked stupid sell right now. That's why we picked it up. We're like, fuck it. We'll try it. But even at, like, five quid... Fuck it, man. I mean, you, you you get an hour or two, even if you hate the genre. <clears throat> yeah, stealthy games are fun sometimes because I, so the the there are the two little mini games I like to play. Just aside from the actual gameplay, number one is how big can I make the pile of corpses that I accrue over the, actually going through the uh, going through the mission, killing them, dragging them back to the one spot because the. Because uh, this game does the Metal Gear Solid thing, where if the enemies see bodies, they go on full alert and they try to shoot you. And the combat in this game, well, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Also, there's a, there's a, the other sub game is how many times do I save scum? I like to play a little bit of an over under on there. I can see how this game would have been quite the little gem back in the day. And yeah, then I didn't think about it at first, but you're right. I think a lot of the control issues could have been solved by not being a 4K, not being rendered at 4K. And like just being on a tiny like four by three screen, but yeah, the the Sierra the Sierra quality voice acting is a nice touch. It's a, it's probably one of the better voice acted games from that era. Um, and there's lots to do, and there's lots of ways to tackle problems. The enemies are smart ish. Sometimes they'll just run around in circles for no reason. Sometimes they'll just unload on you, and they have way better aim than you do as well. So like, oh, I'm gonna shoot this guy. No, I missed, and he shoots me and kills me in one hit. Yeah, um, but the the issue there um, is really the controls, right? Um, there, there's a lot of like, oh, well, I need to do here, and I need to move to this spot, and then perform this series of actions. And the UI doesn't really facilitate that all too well. Uh, there are hot keys, but the fact that you can't really, you have to like move and then do the action with the same button really makes it kind of annoying. I feel like a Baldur's Gate style rule set for this game would probably be a little better, at least in my perspective. Um, And yeah, the, 
The isometric layout does not help at all because people will just run on the other side of buildings where you just straight up can't click and then they'll shoot you or stab you and then you can't really do anything. Um, it's all right. I, it, 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 it falls in the same trap that a lot of real time strategy games do. And I, it's, it's just not really my jam. I, I can see that it's well done. It's, it's definitely a product of its time and I can't really fault it for that because this is the uh, subjective fun category. I just got to give it one share. It's not really doing it for me. Yeah. And well, I, it's no surprise at this point, or it shouldn't be that I don't like real time strategy games and it's games exactly like the, this one and commandos that uh kind of sort of cemented that uh not liking feeling in me uh they're like desperados is in my honest opinion the perfect example of the epitome of an rts game i'm sure starcraft fans will disagree but fuck them if they if these kinds of games weren't so infuriatingly frustrating to me i'd probably love them but the way I'm being asked to control the action and the fact that the mouse movement is set relative to the game's internal rendering resolution, rather the uh, absolute resolution that you have set on your monitor, it's just awful. And it made me miss uh, a couple of clicks more than once. And I usually I either ended up dead or the mission failed because of something. Uh, I remember watching my dad play Commandos behind enemy lines and beyond Call of Duty and a little bit of Desperados back in the day. And even then, I just couldn't figure out why he was having so much fun with it. And I'm almost as old now as my dad was back then, and I still don't get it. So one chair for the fun for me? I I I didn't like it. Um, All right, well... You can you can take that with a big old grain of chainsaw if you're so inclined. That's our, that's our review for uh, Desperados, One of Dead or Alive. You got any final thoughts, ladies and gentlemen? Hey, I think they did a good job with the port. I wish they um, kind of want to give them a pass on the no window thing, but at UHD, I mean, that's going to blow up an entire monitor. And if you're running separate X screens, you're like, well, fuck, I guess I'll put it on the 1080p monitors or something like that. I like to play games in 1080p window, especially if you're trying to capture it. Um, outside of that, yeah, may- maybe like a really janky piece of tape that on the bottom where it doesn't say exit to windows, because apparently that used to be a thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's I would very much uh, I very much agree appreciate uh, i'm very much looking forward to this uh, trend of just bringing old games to linux native ports especially i want thq nordic to do more of that i really really do and yeah just uh not real-time strategy games please Mm -hmm. no yep no no step on snack coming up next why can't game developers read guys it's concerning and do other stuff good too and as dawn rises in the west no wait the northwest lgc must come to an end (laughs) that was a reference there like two people probably gonna get it uh it's yeah it's the end of the show and it's time for some hate mail if you'd like to get in touch with us go to linuxgamecast.com hit the contact button it's pretty easy make sure to fill out the form or if you're a game developer um well don't do what a certain game developer did this week but we'll get to him in a moment just send us three keys or mm, i don't know a bill that we can share amongst all of us sound good nope neato all right so flat packs coming up man from eric he's like yo check this out so i made the mistake of installing the flat pack version of <laughs> uh, that's that's a emulator, by the way, and scientifically. I went to go back and back up my saves. Have a pretty good run of Final Fantasy IV going, but the save files aren't where they are supposed to be. Period. There's no folder in dot config, and Google is no help. Trying to find flat pack help. Any ideas? Um, hmm. Yeah, uh, it's uh, they're deliberately kept away from the rest of the file system. That's the sandboxing at work. Now, there are two ways you could go about it that I could find. You could either open the flat pack itself and have a look in the directories and find the saved games. Or if you start the flat pack, 
it will mount uh, that uh, directory in varlib flatpak. So then right there, you just go to app pp ssp. That's it. <laughs> but see, that's that's probably better than what I was going to suggest, which was s trace the application and try and find where all the f opens are. That's hard mode. You can do that. <laughs> <laughs> that, that. That will tell you exactly where the fuck that file is going. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, that, <laughs> learn, learn, kids, do, do yourself a favor. Learn how to read s trace output. It has saved my bacon a couple times on this show. That that is definitely like I'm not going to say last resort, but fucking. It, 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 it's closely related to the last resort, but mm-hmm. yeah, it's like, all right. Well, the, I... the last resort is maybe one or two steps after that. <laughs> also true. Up next. <laughs> yes. Up next, uh, we got ba- uh, assault and battery. This is from Mir. He says, <laughs> this is towards Pedro's comment about Amazon basics, rechargeable AA batteries, where he said, quote, <laughs> dot, dot, they are lithium ion, exclamation point, end quote. I cry bullshit. When angels deserve to die. Also, Amazon here only shows nickel metal hydrate batteries in the double A size. Right, you are. I, it was totally bullshit on my part. They are. But, but, uh, what, 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 once again, we, we get the, we get this like <laughs> habit of Mir just like Pedro will make a claim, and Mir's like, no, no, you're wrong. Here's like nine pages of me support <laughs> my supporting evidence. Yeah. it's great. I mean, he I gets it. something Keep wrong. Every, uh, he gets something right every now and then. So, Mir. <laughs> <laughs> more, more often than you Ooh. Eh, I think it's a bit of a toss up there <laughs> it's a gauntlet I don't want any part of that man lithium ion double A's that needs to be a thing everywhere I mean I have tons of like 18650s and uh, 21 five, no 21700s yeah 2700s but yeah lithium ion double A's make that happen mm-hmm. I want it yes it's, Hey, they, they would last too long and you could recharge them 300 times. So who the fuck wants those? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> buy rechargeable batteries, ladies and gentlemen. Don't do it because you're some long haired peace neck hippie like old man Vin. Do it because, yeah, I know. 14 wet stinky caches sounds like a lot of money for some batteries, but they'll last you five fucking years. So yep. I, just, I just buy the regular double A's just to throw at people. Yeah, well, there's that. And that was, works, they yeah. Are, they are delicious. <laughs> Something about alkaline. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. Last but not least, what Linux? Uh, this is from Piot- Piotr. Piotr. Go for yes. it. <laughs> and he says, it would be amazing if you could cover Artifact uh, <laughs> game, a game he's developing. It's a uh, survival Val- Val's game artifact? about becoming a powerful wizard. Here's the Steam Store link, redacted. You can request a Steam key here, redacted. Uh, if you have any questions, just reply to his email. Redacted. Or on Discord. Also redacted. redacted. <laughs> so, yeah. Ven, you want to start this one off? Well, um, it's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a while <laughs> um, since I said I'm sorry. Since I, I got to title some hate mail I can't read, babe, because, well, you wanted some coverage. Our artificer, our, our, I don't know how it goes. It's a single player survival RPG all about crafting. <clears throat> uh, I mean, come the hell on, man. Really? I mean, it's bad enough you asked us to help promote, which we're great. We love promoting indie games, indie titles from indie developers. That's one of the things we're here for, mate. But it's a Windows and Mac only game. Now, you, you sent Is this there re- a Mac version? I went to the Steam store. It was the, Windows only. The, okay. <laughs> the, there was a link to download the Mac version in the original oh, game. Oh, okay. But, right. but you went to linuxgamecast.com, went to the contact <laughs> form, and said, hey, man, check out our game. Not, not only did you do that. Okay. That, I'm like, oh, all right. M- maybe you don't know what Linux is, and you just thought it was a name for a game site. Uh, I, I thought Ubuntu was just like a, a modded pack of like uh, Windows Vista, so that's an easy mistake to make. Here's what yeah, fedora is something you wear though. when you say milady. It well, it is, it is. Um, <laughs> it, it only makes sense. Uh, you didn't send us any keys, Brad. <laughs> nope. How's oh, oh, not only are your athleticschemecast.com with like big ass fucking instructions of like. Send us some keys for your shit if you want us to take a look at it. Uh, you didn't even do that. So, we, we couldn't even tell you how well your game works on wine. <sighs> you know, that's a fair fucking point. You know, I might email them back. Just be like, hey, man, maybe. 
Maybe not. Like, cause, cause, cause like here, here's the thing. Like I get, if you don't have a Linux version, maybe you want to like dip your toe in the water and see if like, we'll talk to you. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, Hey, if you at least give us a copy of it, we could see if like, can you even get this working on Linux period? Well, I think empty has it right. Linux is in fact just a flavor <laughs> of Doritos. So let's go ahead and cue the music. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen. You can always uh, find uh, us around 9.30 Eastern Standard Moon Time. That's where we're doing this Nightmare Fuel. It's brilliant. It's hot. Thanks for showing up, participating. If you're listening to it after the fact, you can get this business on demand on the YouTubes, on the podcasts, and all that terrifying place. I'm Vinstone. If you want to scream at me, at Vinstone, plus Vinstone on Google+, Plus, Twitters, or the Googles. I'm Jordan Spong. You can find me on the internet grinding up Doritos and then just snorting them and putting whatever output comes out of that at the Burning Fool on Twitter plus Jordan Spong on Google Plus. I was half tempted to uh, follow Jordan for a moment there. I am Peter Mateusz. If you'd like to find me, it's at an account at four. That's F O U R on Twitter or plus Peter Mateusz on Google Plus. All right, this is like episode three hundred eight, motherfuckers. We had to have learned something. I learned that in four weeks, this will be this will be officially year six. Oh, oh yeah, God damn. <laughs> well, we did learn that Jordan is in fact seizure proof. <laughs> we learned that the hard way too. <laughs> Finally got you. Uh, credits. Let's roll them. Yeah. We yes. could do better. Oh, we, we we could always do better. <laughs> Here's the thing, we're not doing worse. That's the important thing. Ah, uh, look at those lovely, lovely people. Super Ninja Party patrons, that's what I call them. Linux, Linux Gamecast is the true Last Jedi remake. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. This is off about as many people, yeah. <laughs> Moose. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, Frank's there. <laughs> Frank's always there, man. You can always see him out of the corner of your eye, but he disappears if you focus. Listen, listen the, the vast expanse of space is too huge. So Frank is there, and sometimes you see him, sometimes you don't. The vast expanse of your ass. <laughs> the Vance, the Vance expanse. Yes. Bye, Jack Vance. Don't worry, Admiral JT. I'll upgrade your times thing. You just m- might have done it after I had made those fucking credits. So, <laughs> die in fire, everyone. We love you. Bye. We'll see you next week. So will Jordan's t-shirt. No, it'll be a different shirt. Damn it. Five dudes.